Okay, so hello guys, it's Monty. This is not going to be a tutorial video. I'm not actually going to be spraying any edges. I will leave a link down below to the blog post that I read to be inspired on how to do it this way. And then there's another video, there's a video I'm going to link that does include a demonstration, I believe. So those links will be down in the video description. But otherwise, we're going to be talking about my experience um, some kind of tips and tricks, but like not too many. So I went to Hobby Lobby, which is, you know, a mildly controversial location, but it, the spray paint was cheaper. So I did use spray paint. I wound up buying five cans of the little short stacks, which I think is the perfect size if you are, um, doing edges because they're like $3.50. Well, they were because they were on sale. They're like four bucks, which I think is totally reasonable for the amount of spray paint that you get. Um, because it's not like I'm going to run out of this anytime soon. This is not the cheapest way to go. You can totally do this with acrylic paint. Um, and if you do it with acrylic paint, then it'll be a far cheaper endeavor for you. So you can definitely get a similar aesthetic, a similar vibe going cheaper but if you want to use spray paint then this is an option like i said there's probably cheaper alternatives out there but i personally had no interest in a giant can so this is what i got they also sell this at michael's so if you are averse to hobby lobby then that is an option so i went i bought the spray paint then i went to lowe's and I bought two of these like giant boards. Now this is just one of them that I terribly cut in half, as you can tell by this lovely not straight line. But the fact that I was able to saw through this was already happy for me. I do think that Lowe's will cut things for you. I don't know, I'm not a Lowe's employee, um, but I, I think they do. I just didn't want to talk to the person, like I really, didn't want to have a conversation but you can totally just buy one of these and just cut it in half yourself so this lovely board and the most important part that i think if you are using spray paint then um this was like five dollars so again using the spray paint and doing it this way is not the cheapest way to go i also needed to buy some clamps and the reason I'm stressing these clamps and the wood if you are using spray paint is in my experience watching people's videos who just like weighed it down paint was getting inside and that's not what I wanted at all um, so I wanted to be able to squeeze out <laughs> all of the air to make sure that everything was fine and dandy now if you don't mind <clears throat> the spray paint linking into your pages then by all means save yourself ten dollars on the clamps save yourselves five dollars on the piece of wood live your best life but this is i guess like the tip and trick that i have this this way works i haven't had any sort of seepage and we'll get to all of the books that i spray painted in just a moment so these again are my holy grail and i'll just show you how i do that now i'm not going to spray anything but i'll just give you like the basic method and i'll use where is it i'll use evelyn hugo as an example what i do when i do this is i would just put some painter's tape where did i oh, oh found it super organized guys i only use the painter's tape on the spine of the book i do not cover the book in newspaper um i know that some people do that if you want to do that it's not going to hurt anything especially the hard covers but because I use this lovely plank, um, the plank is essentially the same width as the book. It's a little bit wider than the book. And so the cover and the back cover are completely covered by this wood. So I know that Carrie from the book bill was asking how I do paperbacks. Like that's it. Like it's literally that simple because the piece of wood is wider than the paperback. We're good. So I only need to put tape on the spot. Can I even hold it up on the spine? And then I just like four pieces of tape usually. So I'll put a tape horizontal this way and one horizontal this way just to make sure that this is fine and dandy. Everything's gonna have a nice neat edge. And then two pieces of tape 
and they overlap in the middle. Just, again, because I am extremely... I don't want to fuck up the spine of the book, because I'm going to see the spine of the book. Um, and I don't want to see a bunch of spray paint all over it. So I will put the tape on that, and then I would kind of get it to where the edges, like the edges, like the, the ones I'm spraying are sort of lined up with the edge of the wood. Then I'd put the other plank on top, kind of do my best to line that up, you know, live your best life. It's not going to be an exact science. And then basically, once I have all that stuff lined up, I go to the back and I put on the clamp and I'll tighten one just a little bit to make sure that it's not going to move while I grab the other one. And you don't want to do this part too tightly. This is the other tip and trick there's not very many that i have to share but you do not want to screw when you're um clamping this down to relieve all of the air or whatever between the pages you do not want to do this too tightly especially if you're doing the paperback because we all know that a paperback spine wants to break if you read it wrong and so if you are applying pressure if you are sandwiching this book between two planks this spine can easily get fucked up and I say this from experience when I first the first one I did was to all the boys I loved before by Jenny Han I gave it these lovely pink edges and I fucked up the spine can we focus in the process this wrinkle was not here before and here it is it's all because I applied too much pressure and the same thing with red white and royal blue at the bottom can we focus there we are Again, it's not the end of the world. I didn't ruin my book. But you want to be careful when you are applying pressure to a paperback. So you don't need it to be super tight. Like just a little bit of resistance is enough. Just so these aren't moving around. And you've, you're you good. So now that we've seen how I do this, let's look at my results. Okay? Because I like to think that the results of these are... Are pretty fine like this is the first one that I did and you know I have a terrible camera so it's getting washed out but also this pink is not super saturated and again if I flip through the pages there isn't pink there's a you can see tabs that I need to move back out but again like there's not it didn't fuck up the pages my favorite one I think is easily my copy of they both die at the end by Adam Silvera which has the blue edges and again there isn't anywhere in the book that has a bunch of blue spray paint. The one that I think looks the ugliest, if we're going to be honest, is my copy of Emergency Contact because I was a dumb bitch. And for whatever reason, I thought that this gold color was like this blush gold. So I got a blush gold spray paint and it looks hideous. I hate this. I hate this so much. It, it bothers me. Um, I still love this book. But I hate the edges that I did for it because it's just not the right color. It's just not. So I haven't decided if I'm going to try and paint pink over it. I'm not getting rid of this copy because Mary H.K. Choi did sign it and it is personalized. And so the shit is not going anywhere. But I fucked up on these edges. Uh, as for hardbacks, um, I've only done three and I have to say I don't like doing the hardbacks nearly as much as the paperbacks because I find that they're just not, not for me. I want to talk about it again but better for a moment because I understand this is a very poppin' book. I have a review up. I'll leave it linked in the cards. Um, this was the second hardback that I did. When I did On the Come Up, I wasn't as concerned I did on the come up with black, but the cover of the book is also in black. And so if I had a little bit of like spray paint, because the cover is already black, I just didn't want to fuck up this part so much. Um, but again, but better it does not have, you know, a blue thing. So it's a bright ass yellow hardback. So I used my painter's tape, but I want to say that whatever material is on the cover of this hardback is super, super, super prone to tearing. I did not have that issue when I taped Children of Blood and Bone, which I also gave the black edges to. Um, the, the paint, the paint, 
the painter's tape did not peel off the fabric of this hardcover, but it fucked up this one. So if you are going to spray or paint the edges of this, when you are peeling off the tape, I would suggest you be very, very, very gentle, move very slowly because it rips so easily. I was not at all prepared, not at all prepared. Um, so there is that. And then again, this one it has these lovely blue edges, which I think match the end paper close enough. Obviously my blue is a lot brighter. And at the end of the day, I think it looked, it looks okay. I like it. So I'm not, I'm not mad about it. Um, so that's how I do it. Like I said, I take, I don't know what I did with that. Here it is. Um, and again, none of these have um super bleeding six of crows right just for sort of comparison because it does look slightly different when you know i spray them myself so if i take the first one that i did you can see on the pages other way that like it bleeds in slightly more than you would probably want to do like if i look at this page if I had ripped this page, I would have probably cried. If I were to hold this up and the camera were to focus, you can see that there is slight bleeding into the page. Into the, like you, you can tell. That does not happen if I were to hold up like a similar page. There could be a spoiler on the page I'm about to hold. Oh, here we go. This one's blank. We're, we're good. I found a nice blank white page. You can see that the one that I did, it bleeds in far more than this. You can't even see the bleeding on this one. But if I were to look at like my Children of Blood and Bone, which I did more recently, like there's no difference. Like it's not, it's like there's no bleeding. So it's all amount of like figuring out what is just the right amount of pressure between your, your lovely wooden planks. This is not a risk-free endeavor. If you do this, there is a serious chance that you could fuck up. You can make a mistake. You know, the gods might not be in your favor. Um, and you just kind of have to live with that. So don't think that, you know, just because I said that I haven't had any issues that you won't, like it could, like you could still, that could still happen. Like it's, it's a possibility. Also with the spray paint, I don't have to go through and undo every page. Part of that is because, but like there's nothing holding them together. So once... Once I've sprayed this, right, if I were to spray this, I'd let it sit for a good, like, 10 minutes, maybe, go make something to eat, come back. Once I know that it's, you know, not going to fuck up what I do to, like, break the pages in or whatever, is I literally, for the paperback, I literally just flop it. We're good. All of the pages are undone. I only made this because a couple of people said that they might be interested. So hopefully the end product was something that you do appreciate. And um, I'll see you when I see you. Until then, bye!